All right. That's an example of the kind of dialogue we're going to be having on Friday's edition of Morning at NTV. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Priscilla with Gina Naloga, and I'm with one of the stars in those dances. We're privileged to be joined by Lillian Maximilian. No, I'm good. <laughs> well, she's a phenomenal dancer. She has made her name and mark on the dance industry here in Uganda, but of course across Africa. And so we're privileged to be having her. Good morning to you and uh, Happy New Year. Good morning and Happy New, New Year to you. How are you? Too. I'm fine. I'm you grateful. You don't see you seated in the seat. You're very collected. <laughs> 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 Not the one that we see on our stages, you know, performing all these forms of dance. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're glad to have you. I'm grateful to be here. So we want to find out, before I talk to the gentleman here, yes. as an artist, a dance artist, how do you feel when you are expressing yourself through dance? Uh, to be honest, I usually forget about where I'm at. I feel like I'm in a, a totally different realm of the world. Mm -hmm. I feel I am embracing what I truly am and, and it's, it's, it's just so different. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm pouring my soul out to the people. I'm expressing what I can't really say. That's how I feel when I'm on stage. What's your first memory of dance? My first memory of mm -hmm. dance? That was in, at St. Mary's State, and now I know they can't like really cane me or beat me. <laughs> <laughs> At St. Mary's Chitende in, uh, in a bathroom, mm -hmm. a grey bathroom, concrete, with two ladies who are really my very good friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, um, that was Cabrin mm. and Joy mm. at 2 a.m. rehearsing. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> 2 a.m. Yes. Okay. Rehearsing mm -hmm. and and just having so much fun and using a stolen radio that is very illegal in school <laughs> <laughs> and and being too serious uh, at the school campus just to avoid being being caned or being punished for doing wow. that wow yes so we used to rehearse in the night and my other vivid memory was when i was about eight and my uncles held a camera mm -hmm. one of my uncles mm -hmm. and i was dancing to i don't remember which song all i remember is that i was wearing uh, i was wearing a blue t-shirt mm -hmm. and black trousers and i was turning my legs from one side to another one side to another and he still has that recording and i told him you know what someday i'll need that recording yeah. because i know i feel something there's something about this dancing thing that I'm doing yeah I will need it to to show to the world that it was from within and what has enabled you to stay ground in light of the fact that it's something that has not really been previously appreciated in Uganda your parents I'm pretty sure were not agreeing with the you know mm -hmm. <laughs> the no, direction mm -hmm. of life you were taking and so amidst all those uh, turbulences how mm -hmm. did you manage to stay strong and stand your ground that I am never girl and I am going to dance Coming from a background that is very formal, people have corporate jobs. I've been in a corporate entity before and quitting my job and deciding to dance and having graduated and now I look like I looked like a time waster. Mm. It was tough. It was really tough. But in a nutshell, I think I had a very strong support system of, of friends and, and, and people I had met who had already walked miles and they saw something in me and potential and for me that kept me going. It was painful of course that family was against it, at some point I was not talking to them for a period of time because there was a form of rejection but not all of them there were some who really supported me and they're like this thing that you're doing we don't understand it but we're with you but we're with you you know so having that support system and them also going through the same situation and us having that community that believed in what we were doing 
we didn't know what was coming we didn't know what was going to, i didn't know i would be i had a feeling and i knew that it, it was bringing something to me but i didn't know it would come this far yeah it's just having that hope and faith and having a vision and knowing I'm sticking to this but I know it's not for it's not a wastage of time so me having people I looked up to as mentors who had made it already and understanding that I'm also on this journey with them and there's there's something I usually call mm. the people you surround yourself with are either going to make you or break you so they were very honest with me throughout my journey to debt and I think that is what has kept me going until I, I had to like, they go to a point and they're like, okay, now you have to be grounded, we're not going to babysit you. Like you have to believe that what you're doing has substance, what you're doing is contributing something to the community and it's not just about you. And for me, that's what keeps me going. Really. Wow, that's a powerful story. And Thank why you. do we bring this to the platform? Because there's so many young people um, mm -hmm. who are struggling with certain passions. But those passions uh, are not generally acceptable by the bar. Uh, but then again, at the same time, if you invested in that passion, it can actually become something. And why do we also focus on that? People, at least, especially in Uganda, we think, OK, we have given uh, a leeway to music. OK, maybe you can make something of yourself through music. Music, but the other forms of dance mm -hmm. have uh, kind of not gotten the same oomph and send a push which brings us to Edwin Mukarazi uh, he's a script uh, a writer he's also an actor but he's also under the UNCC and uh, he's able to defend the case uh, for dance good morning to you Edwin and you're most welcome to the program good morning Okay, then we also, of course, have the usual suspect, Andrew Kagwaha from the <laughs> Daily Monitor. Um, he's also one that has pushed the likes and crafts of Navagalas of this world to be able to get a spotlight uh, in regards to exposing their form of art and uh, having it exploited by others. And that way, other people pick interest. Again, there was this girl you wrote about, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. So thank you so much, Andrew, for the work that you You're do welcome. that you support the craft. Now, look, talking, talking about um, this... Uh, uh, element of performing arts Edwin it is one that has been there with us from our traditional days dance has been part of our cultures our customs the different traditions in different cultures and tribes in Uganda cannot do away or do not exist if you el if you remove dance from them so let's talk about how this particular art in Uganda has been appreciated and developed over the course of time um, thank you so much um, like you've mentioned, there are different forms of, of dance mm -hmm. and it uh, depends on what someone is interested in. Mm -hmm. What uh, cultural performances, Uganda is rich. I know we've gone for festivals and uh, we are one of the, of the countries that never run out of content. Every <laughs> day we have something new. Today we have Onyege and Togoro, the other time we have uh, Maxim and Anka Samogola, the other time. Because uh, I know uh, Maximilian does contemporary, but she's also big sense cultural, traditional, and it's beautiful to watch. But um, it has evolved over time, uh, some for the better, some for the worse, uh, where some uh, people, uh, one day I was with uh, Ashraf Samuel Gerede and uh, Sam Okelo. And Ashraf was saying, okay, no, now you are a mature training, Maxim Panaka Samogo. It's like me going yeah. to train Runyege and Togoro, mm. ding, ding. Basically, I'll miss out something. Definitely. So we've had our cultural dances at least a bit watered down. Uh, same for a few guys, the likes of Watimon. If I, I know I'm having dances from the north, I look for Watimon. If I know in the central, I want authentic, authentic, then I look for Nanduja. <laughs> you get. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, some are really upholding it. But also with the uh, contemporary and Latin, which we have space for at the National Theatre, we try to see that we, we promote them, giving them good. Uh, rehearsal space. Mm -hmm. Initially we had a very tiny dance studio uh, which now we multiplied at least by three. Of course we had a partnership with Kaiga Dance Company 
And um, yeah, we are supporting arts. Before COVID, the shows were going down for dance mm -hmm. theatre. Mm -hmm. But last year, we had uh, over five serious performances. So I think we're evolving and also embracing different forms of art. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. <coughs> Andrew, as one who has had the privilege of being the fourth estate in this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, through your lenses, through your pen and paper, you've been able to interrogate mm -hmm. uh, these uh, forms of performing arts. And from your perspective, has it grown leaps and bounds? And, and, and is it now, you know, compared to the region and the rest of the continents, being appreciated and consumed accordingly? Mm, okay, one, the very first thing I think I would like to say, I would want to start by disagreeing with her. Mm -hmm. uh, one, we usually say art is not appreciated enough in Uganda. Disagreeing with her? Yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually what happens is art is appreciated in Uganda until it becomes serious. Like when your parents are seeing you paint, they're like, wow, you're good, oh. keep it up. Mm -hmm. And then when you want to become serious, they're like, wait, what? Like, are you trying to be serious with that now? <laughs> That's when they start wow. having a problem yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. Most of the times when they see you dance when you're growing up, they're like, yeah, keep doing it. it actually, at times they will even pay for you to go for classes until you start becoming serious with it. They're like, now you need to become serious with your life. <laughs> 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 because <laughs> that this does not equal to seriousness. <laughs> like we need to become serious. We thought that was just, just a phase, a phase. Wow. And, and now you're trying to live that life. So, like that's how it is most of the times. Because it it is the same thing even when it comes to writing. Like mm. they they are okay with it when you're just doing it. Yeah, you're writing so things and they're in the papers. So like, like, yeah, actually, my son the other time wrote an article and it's in the paper. When you tell them you want to work to right there like but you should be using that writing to become a lawyer <laughs> so it's what happens mm -hmm. but on on the place of dance uh one in uganda dance has a very weird relationship i should say <laughs> uh one you have part of it that seem to that people seem to embrace and then part of it that they do not embrace. Mm. Uh, the parts of it they embrace are usually, uh, we are very okay with people doing Maganda. We love it very much. We are not really willing to pay for it professionally. Like, we are not willing to recognize people mm. that are doing it mm. as people that are on a job. Mm. Like, we think they are going to do it because they, they love being Baganda so much or they love their <laughs> culture so much. And then, for the mainstream, uh, I remember when I was growing up, one of the like the biggest musical performers was was Obsessions, and they were just dancing before they took on music, mm -hmm. which taking on music was a very bad idea. Yeah. But <laughs> 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 so they were just dancers, and they were very famous, and I believe people used to them a lot yeah. mm. for that. Around 2005, things started becoming like really bad for dance. Maybe because very many people got in and of course there are chances that some of them got in because obsessions had become very famous. And in Uganda when things become famous, you attract more players, not necessarily very good players. So we started getting a number of dance troops that were not necessarily so good but just showing up mm -hmm. to the party uh, that time i think we had some dance theaters that were good uh, mostly obsessions and i think it's because of their grooming at namasagali that they did it mm -hmm. so well but then things went bad like people that used to hire real dancers for music videos kind of started just getting a beautiful girl which is the phase we are still in right now mm -hmm. like today people do not know whether they're hiring a dancer or a video vixen like someone hires a dancer and then they're like i just want you to look good and <laughs> the dancer is thinking like wait i thought i was here to actually add something to the video so we got into that phase and that phase man made things so bad because one 
people were being told we can make you famous by putting in a music video so wow. we got very many people that did not really know what to do in a music video and then there were others that were just brought on board and they were told uh, you can just check mm. and we are literally still there and of course with that came with very bad pay because people do not appreciate appreciate and stand and then there are those that are desperate that are willing to do it without pay because they want to be famous like okay technically that's where we are now no my yes. what is the role of dance especially in the modernity of uh, you know performing arts and in light of what andres just uh, talked about uh, people seem to still have minimal appreciation of what dance is so talk to us about what dance is and what is its role in this nature of industry first of all dance is very broad it's not just about entertainment it's a tool that can be used for so many things it's therapy it's informative that is through dance theater but also it is it is the only form of expression that does not require verbal use it's the body speaking it's an interpretation of emotions it's an interpretation of culture of things that we cannot say but can express and can can portray based on the feelings that we have and based on information mm. that is being said. Um, dance, is, um, dance has a very strong core in performing arts because it's an element that will highlight what cannot really be, I could say, expressed or what cannot be brought to light. Some things are very sensitive to be said verbally, but through dance, they can easily be informed to an individual. Take for instance, uh, topics like colorism. Mm -hmm. It's something that we look at in society and it's normal to just tell a child, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But it emotionally, it's affecting the child. That is already mental health. Mentally, it's affecting them. And as they grow up, mm. you look at a, someone you are with in school the who had a different complexion. Is when, as, as and when I can, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know. So at the end of the day, how do we talk about things that are sensitive in society without necessarily slapping it in people's faces? How do you gently? Trans, transmit this information to people for them to understand how these people feel. If I go on TV and I'm like, oh my God, they told me to bleach my skin. My mom used to make me feel like this. Like that is being babyish. Mm. But if I would express it with just movement and expressing the feeling of of, of, of anger and pain and maybe using another form of art which is visual effects, my skin peeling, then someone would feel something on the inside that they can't explain, but through the movement that I have done and using other art forms, I have transmitted how those people feel. In a nutshell, that's all I could say. That, that is what the importance of dance. We transmit what can't really be said. And it's also therapy. When you go to some communities, when people dance, the way they perceive themselves changes, you know? They gain confidence, but also um, for some organizations, you're called to read about what this community is going through. It could be a company, it could be uh, an organization for women or children. And as a dancer, you have to read and then understand. In my dance, um, in my dance, uh, it's usually like a class. What, am I, what activities am I going to add to this class that are going to help these people target this and this and this. Mm -hmm. What do I want to find out? And that is when dance goes deeper into therapy. What tools am I going to use for these people to be confident enough to speak out? What tools am I going to use to, to engage with these people and understand where they're at in their, in their timeline? Things they can 
say freely as they're playing these games that I can get in my head and mm -hmm. then write in my report for the client to understand that they won't sit down and tell the boss, you know what, I'm going through this, you know? Hmm. So, okay, yes. that's interesting perspective. Uh, relating it directly to theatre, Edwin, in regards to the role of dance, especially in theatre, could you draw us that picture? Um, I've seen productions uh, where we uh, were using a lot of dance. I, I, at least Alex Mukulu does it a lot. Yeah. And the, in the current uh, situation, I've watched one by Philip Luswata, which was about... Um, shame on your hands. Yeah, shame on your hands, mm -hmm. about how ladies, uh, sometimes men go overboard. And um, he used a lot of dance and uh, choreography and music, and it gives you a different perspective. First of all, Philip Luswata as a mostly rights comedy. Mm. Then he has this other touch of it. Actually, if you asked me uh, two years ago, uh, some of the best productions, uh, I'll pick that. I think it's because of dance. Yeah. Yeah, so dance kind of unmet. Uh, some of the uh, comedians that we know, that we like stand up, that we really look up to, all that can hold an audience for a longer time uh, without getting bored. Mm -hmm. If you have singing and dancing as part of it, trust me, it is going to be a different performance. Mm -hmm. I've personally used it uh, whenever I'm doing a one-man show and I get uh, Uncle Walter on board. Of course, the strength of dance actually came more to my attention mm -hmm. during those shows. Because what I used to do, I, I do like 40 minutes, so I want a breather, I bring in the dancer, then the energy shifts. Mm. By the time I come back to do stand-up, mm. like no one wants to, to listen. Mm. So now, the best way was to see how does it look, the same production. Mm -hmm. It's not now we are finished, mm. stand-up, now we are now we do. doing dance. Mm. And I've also seen it in the theater legends that are at the theater where we collected a lot of uh, Christopher Mchivis of this world, the Shavians, the Nandu Jazz. Normally, in the middle, before the intermission, they play uh, heavy drums and performance. By, by the time the play resumes, your energy is now on something more. Mm -hmm. So to get me to settle is going to be very hard. Yeah, so... But uh, another thing I've seen about dance in theatre is that it's sometimes it's abstract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a man cannot follow. <laughs> Remember when I just come uh, to, to watch things at the theatre, I would sit, ah, I'm yawning. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to decode. Exactly. <laughs> then the guys you came with, because some were students of dance in Makere, you see them, they say, oh. I think it's interesting, <laughs> but when I, I relate, those are like 10 years ago, ah, now I can sit through and follow the piece mm. and mm. I can watch rehearsals and still want to watch the play because every time I watch, it's a different kind of production. Mm. Mm. Actually, uh, the productions uh, Lillian last did at the theatre, there is a, nar a narrative you had about it. Mm. It was totally different from what I picked in the dance here, so I said, oh. okay, mm. let's go with that story, but I have my <laughs> story. But you have <laughs> something different, yeah, so, so that's it really thing. intrigues and trickles yeah, you in a exactly. senses. If drama has undertakes, yeah. uh, dance has many undertakes. Okay, mm. uh, let's talk about the... the, uh, uh, the, the, the okay. Just, just, just one, one more thing, like uh, one thing people do not really usually pick about dance and performing that's that's theater and film is that uh, one of the best ways to understand your body and interpret emotions is through body movement uh, one the way you move when you're annoyed is not the same way you move when you're happy mm. Mm. Yeah. so <laughs> so most of the times when we do not do it in Uganda of course mm. we do not teach our actors to dance mm -hmm. to help them interpret different emotions but 
most of the times that's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the best fight scenes are usually choreographed by dancers, mm -hmm. the ones you see in action movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the moment you pick dancers and you put them on an action set to put on a fight scene, you usually get some of the... Actually, yeah, in Uganda, if you've seen Building 62, Building 62. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. where there was uh, Alan Kutos and uh, Maureen. The, no, there is Maureen, of course, she's a dancer, but there uh, is Ab 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 Danger. Uh, yes, Ab Danger, Kenya. And yes. the fight scenes were amazing. Mm. Like, they were really amazing. And that's mainly because everyone on that cast technically had a background of dance, yes. okay. actually including the director. Mm. So All right. Um, Lillian, we'll come back to understand <laughs> the professional side of this dance and how you get to, you know, embolden some of these things that uh, Andrew's talking about. But I wanted to go back to Edwin mm. and uh, follow through the trajectory of uh, evolution of dance. Um, he talked about uh, dance trips that came through from with the obsessions making dance quite popular. And then you do have it building into festivals that we had, like Bayimba mm -hmm. Festival. So I feel like it's shut down somewhere somehow, but it's there. Uh, it's there. Yes. Yeah, okay, where? <laughs> <laughs> Are you here. Don't it. <laughs> yes, and so we want to find out how have those influenced the appreciation of uh, this performing art? Mm, of course, they have. Um, obsessions came with its uh, kind of dancing, like. Uh, Andrew mentioned, but now people have taken on something different. Mm -hmm. I remember those days when you wanted to learn how to dance, you'd watch Channel O, <laughs> watch those moves, eh? <laughs> <Yeah, my gender. laughs> <laughs> you repeat, you repeat, you repeat until you, you nail it, uh, or if you, until you think you have nailed it. I, I, sometimes I tell people I choreographed dance in high school and they laugh. <laughs> they say, wow. But it was a matter of watching that and replicate. But now uh, I think the evolution has come in where people have to write scripts, synopsis of mm -hmm. their performances, which wasn't there. I remember when I had just joined uh, theater. Uh, we had the LXDs and all that. You would still see that channel or kind of thing. But now at the theatre, let's say there is a contemporary dance show. First of all, you are going to expect like two months of guys really doing rehearsal. Then you're going to see guys are composing music mm -hmm. for that particular. It's mm -hmm. not getting a DMX song, put it there because it's not actually going to go anywhere on social media and all that kind of thing. Then you're going to see some of them go to the extent of hiring uh, actors if there are some emotional parts in it where like, you don't need to talk. Yeah. So I've seen a shift from uh, just watching something, we replicate Jabas Maimichi and do it. Now I've seen people personalize a script and I've seen it come to life. Mm -hmm. Um, in culture, uh, I've also seen the Bisokos are different. Mm. Like I can watch Baksimba four times by different, by Nere, Performance. by groups, mm. by what, and it is a different kind yeah. of performance. Mm. One thing I've seen, which is a negative evolution of dance, is a lot of Chichubaism. Mm -hmm. Guys don't stick together. I don't know very <laughs> many. You go uh, personally, I, I, I MC weddings. You find the same people coming as grand performers. On another wedding, almost three quarters are roots. On the other, they are, uh, now you say, guys, where do you belong? Mm -hmm. So it's about who, who is giving me a 30k here, who is giving me a 50k, mm. and that is really killing it because when will you sit down and and compose, mm -hmm. you get, yeah. But money-wise, some guys have made it. Some have hmm. really made it. Some okay. have uh, struggled, and others have traveled. <laughs> yeah, traveled. <laughs> <laughs> traveled. Uh, speaking of traveled, now you're one who has uh, done so and uh, have ensured that. Uh, 
you pick up the professionalism that comes with this art. Mm. Let's talk about the journey of uh, making it professional in the industry. Mm. My journey. It started with um, understanding that having, I think having a corporate background helped because then I realized, okay, if I've decided to do this professionally, I need to treat it like a job. Okay. When you're working in a corporate company or any job, it's eight to five. What should be the difference between something you're very passionate about? Eight to five, you're not passionate, you're working because you need the money for most people, you must say. So I, I decided now I have to be professional about this. I need to create a timetable for myself because now you're self-employed and, and you, you, it's going to be self-drive. The effort you, 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 you invest in it is the effort, is what you get out in most cases. It's like, okay, now I have to create a timetable. I have to, most of, most of that came from the things that were demanded from me. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need an invoice. You need a quotation. I was like, okay, it's just kind of similar to. So I'd pick. I would pick like uh, knowledge from the work ethic that I had, and and add it to that. I was like, okay, now I need a logo. Mm -hmm. I will need to create a website. Okay, then now I will need to find a way of expressing myself with my mouth and not dancing because now I would not be here and be like. You know I'm a dancer, and you know, so how do I talk about myself? Mm -hmm. And I need to record everything I'm doing because at some point they'll ask me, what do you the have? Evidence best you know, where is the evidence? And then further and further on when I started writing applications and proposals, they were asking questions of things I had never thought about in my head. Short bio, portfolio then they're asking you for your artistic statement. Artistic statement is like, you have to express where you are as an artist in that moment. What inspires you? What drives you? Why the art form? Why a particular category of dance? Why dance theater? How does that influence you and your community? It's like, wow, this is so much to learn. So I feel like every time the, the deeper I get into dance, mm -hmm. the more I dig deeper, the more I get to understand that there's so much to learn. But also aligning myself with professors, professor friends, aligning myself with people who are like a next step ahead of me. To be honest, I didn't go to school for dance. Mm -hmm. It was the passion that drove me, but also curiosity of what is in this thing that is called dance and why do people feel like it is irrelevant? What makes it irrelevant? Mm -hmm. And for me, that, that has led to, that has helped me increase the level of professionalism but also understand that how you treat this is how people will take you. Mm -hmm. There are other people who will sit here and will not be taken seriously because of how they're talking about what they're doing. But if I'm able to talk about what I'm doing and if it's relevant to the community and if I can find a way of earning from it without backstabbing others or without making, like giving it a level of respect just like any other job would be given respect, then the same energy would be transmitted to a person who would want to hire me as a profession. Okay. Will you ever go to school for it? I already started. Okay. I received a scholarship, uh, 2022, mm -hmm. a pin about scholarship, and I had to align myself with a mentor and choreographer who I, I had to shadow for four months. And I'm very grateful that that journey started, but I've also worked with universities, the New York University, um, you know, Maryland University in Washington, and New Zealand, Auckland, and Macquarie University to do research. And that has continued to help me understand the scholarly side of dance and, and respect it even more. And yes, maybe I will go for a master's. Yes. It will come in, it, 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 it's in a pipeline. <laughs> yes. But I don't want to disclose it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, and, and we want to bring that out so that um, the people who are watching, yes. you know, who have people who love to dance, mm. don't just think about it as just a, a passion. There's passion, then there's okay. actually professionalizing yes. your passion, mm -hmm. that it can get you to places that you really never dreamt of. And yes. now the associations you speak of actually 
uh, get to have someone go like, oh, okay, so I can upgrade this version into something yes. more acceptable in society. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe Edwin, that's one of that's been one of the challenges for artists in any forms of performing art, really across the bar uh, in relation to theatre. How do they professionalize? their work mm -hmm. how do they present themselves with their work so that they can be able to bid and get as much work with formidable organizations associations as possible mm -hmm. and uh, you know under the the, the the center I know that's that's been one of your mandates and drives in most winters, recent times what has been the reception of artists like Navagara in tr making sure that they streamline themselves to be accorded the respect of their performing art as it should be Thank you so much. Um, with dance or other forms of art, it's normally an open ticket. Mm -hmm. You enter and go out as you wish. Um, so the likes of Navagala got the passion, got the space, and so they need to climb. There are those that have seen <laughs> since I joined, they always come around and ask for some porridge. Some chapati <laughs> uh, dance for <laughs> ten minutes and go. <laughs> but so, it's the reality. Yes, yeah. there are those that are going to come and dance, rehearse if there is a show or not. They'll put their music. We have some space there near the offices. I normally uh, fight with my my uh, colleagues mm -hmm. these guys are making noise at 10 in the i say if you are if you are working for fufa and balls start hitting the window <laughs> <laughs> just appreciate where you came <laughs> let them make their noise yeah. they have no problem. <laughs> so we normally disagree on that but uh, some have made a lot out of it mm -hmm. yeah um some don't know how to position themselves, yet they are very talented. You look at these guys and you say, wow, these guys can't dance, but what do we do? Because some look for opportunities at the theater. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our funding is not so good, so you'll find mm -hmm. the same money we have yeah. while the theater mm -hmm. day, while the dance day, mm -hmm. it's the same. Django to him, the corner. Mm. <laughs> you get some get frustrated because mm. they look to us as uh, the people that really need to be actually finding them, helping here and there. Mm. But we are the ones pleading always. Uh, we have World Theatre, World Dance Day. We have this little. Uh, but some use that because what comes with it. Maybe you can film the show, you can stream the show, mm -hmm. and you take advantage of that. Uh, like there are some works you you put your name those artists don't have any platform but it goes straight to the UNCC platform mm. so at least someone will take you serious there are people that see that as important but also we've had uh, we've had uh, lectures or seminars mm. uh, Alliance France gave us some money a few years back where we brought we did master classes for the dancers Mm. Yeah, to know more about uh, their craft, but also how to professionalize it. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to register your company? Why is it uh, important to have a membership? Not that you are the you are the treasurer, you are the director, you are the choreographer, <laughs> you are the marketeer. <laughs> we try. You <laughs> see it in accords and things. Yeah. 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 Was this a one-man show? <laughs> <laughs> Some don't know how mm. to cost themselves. Mm. Mm. Personally, I've been a victim before. <laughs> uh, we were working for NTV here. And we had a show as high in the sky. Mm. But until uh, the show ended, now the producer came and beckoned me. Do you know if you said you were leaving at that time, we are going to add you money? I said. <laughs> <laughs> And many dancers are like that. I have, yes, I have two million for you to perform uh, at Serena in next month. He says yes before he knows mm. what is entailed. How long yeah. are you going to rehearse? How True. many shows are you going to do? Yeah. You get. Do you have any rights on 
the videos yeah. there, all oh, that yeah. kind of mm. stuff. So, mm. yeah, we're trying to have this conversation. Speaking of which, Navagada, how yes. are you protecting your work? Uh, because uh, this is an, an industry that is very, very uh, prominent. Mm. It may not be so prominent in Uganda, but the rest of Africa has picked up on dust. Yes. And mm -hmm. so you have to protect your work. Yes. How are you protecting your work? Copyright. Copyright. How? One, all my videos have logos on them. There is a watermark on the videos. But also, I have it in writing. And then with everyone I work with, there is a contract. So if there is something like plagiarism of anyone I was working with, then they'll be confronted. But I also, I've been blessed enough to have um, a lawyer who's my friend, whose name I won't mention. And they've been helping me understand copyright, mm -hmm. most especially when it comes to intellectual property. Art is intellectual property. Mm. So you have to understand that it's not tangible, but what are those things that are important mm -hmm. that you have to protect as an artist, most especially when you're creating your work. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very important. Okay. Mm. So, 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 okay, sorry, yeah, I'm actually asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm kind of used to asking questions, but uh, mm -hmm. what exactly happens in a situation where you you choreograph yourself mm. and uh, do this body movement that ends up in a music video? Mm. Like, what, what, which kind of conversations or contracts are usually existing between the artist, who is you, and yes. then the artist whose music video will end up on his YouTube oh. channel? Uh, like, there's there's an understanding. For me, it comes from. I'm creating specifically for your video. You're not going to see, I, 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 it's exclusive to that artist. Mm -hmm. And we also have an understanding and that sometimes is based on, of course, the payment. What do you want to see in your video? How do you envision okay. my movement? Uh, so it's, it's exclusive to that artist. Oh, so right. that I, I, I don't really, mind because even if someone copies it from a music video i don't mind they because it was work. exclusively to that artist all right uh, andrew mm -hmm. in a minute what's the future of uh, dance in uganda uh, i think the future is bright but dancers need to help us help them mm. uh when like remember the times i talked about when there were the obsessions and the likes mm -hmm. they may not have been the best we had but yeah. uh they were understandable like i usually look at dancers whiskey like none of us can leave this place and go and take a shot of whiskey it's morning uh, probably you're hungry like it will not do you well yet mm. every one of us can leave this room and actually take a glass of juice mm. like it will not do anything to you in fact it will make you feel better mm. like dance poetry these art forms are like whiskey like they need to be broken down for people for a layman <laughs> to <laughs> actually digest yeah. them yeah. Okay. so most of the times i'm in i'm watching like i've watched her shows and i'm thinking okay like i like it but if i brought my sister like my sisters went to university they are more schooled, schooled than me but mm. i'm thinking if okay. I wasn't this grounded in the yeah. art form and I brought my sisters, would they actually be thrilled the way I'm thrilled? Well, that's a task that Navagada and the rest <laughs> of the performing arts industry have to challenge themselves to streamline and uh, rectify for the future on mm -hmm. survival of the arts.